So I had the valve closed on it and I opened it so I wouldn't be fighting the suction or pulling air through it while I tighten it up. I got another one of these things. We're gonna install it on the chipper. <laughs> I meant to service this thing the other day and I just did not get around to it after I tore through that winch up there and got all that back going. Still got all my tools laying here because some of these I'll use over here on service so uh i'm about to fire it up and we'll open the door let it run for a little while get it warmed up well no i'll tell you what i'm gonna do first i'm gonna go ahead and pull the vacuum on it first while it's cold that would be the smart thing to do tim not get it hot first so yeah i can do it right here I'll just pull the oil fill out, put the vacuum on it right there, and then we'll take the plug out. All you need is a shop vac, hose. Let's, I may not be able to do this one hand. Let me cut the camera off. I'll get it up there and then I'll turn it back on. We got it on there. I kind of got my doubts on this one. Whether it'll hold it in there or not, we'll see. Whether it will. These things are real easy to uh, figure out what goes on what. Their website lists all the different engines, manufacturers, all that stuff like that on them. You just look it up. There it is. Up there. <laughs> we'll see how this one works. I've got a bucket in here just in case I need it. I don't remember where I clamped the camera at last time. I'm going to put the camera up here somewhere. Anyway, here goes nothing. I took my watch off, so it's off. These jeans are fixing to get thrown away. So, uh, I'm good to go. I'm not exactly ready to get this thing open. Smart thing would do would be to get a wrench to fit this before I go back. I think we're ready. That's going to do it. It's going to work. I can feel it. So I had the valve closed on it and I opened it so I wouldn't be fighting the suction or pulling air through it while I tighten it up. Now I've got this 90 that I can put on it now too. I'm gonna go up there and cut the vacuum off. So. 
Well, I could reach it from right there where I was at, so that's pretty nice. All right, that works real well, man. The vacuum on that thing, because it's slap full of oil. Oh, no. I don't know that I'm going to be able to turn this thing because of that, uh, that cross member right there. Let me see what I can do. You've got to be. not magnetic I didn't hit it to the, it's right there I'm gonna be y'all's comedic entertainment for tonight this is really jacking me up too where are you at There it is. Gosh, dog. It's so good. Here. That's what I'm looking for. It's obviously brass. There's not a magnetic piece on that thing. I dropped it. Where did it, where you think it landed? In after it ricocheted off of everything on them. Look, so I got her going on now. What I did was I trimmed the end of it off just a little bit to give me enough clearance to uh, get it to spin. So that worked. It's actually brass. I think it's brass. The reason I know it's brass because <laughs> I it looks like the end of where I cut it off but I fooled around a while ago and off camera I dropped this thing <laughs> and it bounced all over everything up here went right in the oil bucket and of course the oil bucket you know happens to be half full of burnt motor oil I thought no biggie I'll grab my magnet real quick and get it out well <laughs> As everybody knows, or everybody should know, that a magnet will not stick to no uh, brass. So I ended up having to, I had another bucket in here, and luckily it was empty. So I was able to transfer the oil, pour it over into it, and was able to get the this piece that I'm locking in here now out. So, I put a hose on there and got all right into the bucket now with the valve on it. So, yeah, let me grab uh, a hose to stick up there. I don't, I don't think I have any three eighths hose here with me currently. I got something else that'll work though. First thing we're gonna do is crank it up and let it run for a few minutes. Pull that all up. Open this door. We engage this clutch. Get that drone spinning in there. So, on this machine, you can lift the yoke on it. That's the yoke. You can lift it or you can push down on it. Either one. 
by like a crush on it. And this is your winch in and out. This is your winch. They call it a feed assist right there. It kind of overrides it to make the feed wheels run just a little bit if you've got a uh, stick in there that you're trying to pull up in it while the winch is out. And this right here is what disengages and in engages your winch free spool. And then pretty much all your newer chippers have this far reverse right here. Back this way is far to run forward. And then you've got a neutral position right there. And then that's a reverse. And they've got it set like that to where say something goes on and you fall or anything like that. If you can hit this right here and this bar goes all the way across, you can get those feed wheels reversed. Now it's got these things right here that are called second chance. And I actually took them out and I'm gonna explain to you why I did. So there were, there were two of them. There's one over there, one over here. And they're just, see there's the wire on it. It comes right out of the thing and it's connected to the reverser. So the idea is if you start to go into the chipper, you can reach up there and grab this last chance and pull it. But you can see I'm pulling on this thing as hard as I can and I can't reverse it like that the problem that I was having you see how the wire skin off right there on it it's when I feed it with the mini with the grapple I catch these wires as I'm feeding it with butts and stuff and it pushes it up against the top right there so I pulled them out where they'd be out of the way Because I rarely hand feed this thing and if I do make sure I stay out of the way out of if I have anybody else feed it make sure they stay out of the way of it too stay on the side keep your body outside of this when you're feeding it that way if something does grab you you got time to get to this right here joke at gas burner engine in that thing love to hear this thing run man it's pretty easy to service I mean right there's a oil filter Here's a fuel filter. I got a fuel filter I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna service it every hundred hours because it all it takes is uh SAE 530 oil. And that's it. No more than it costs. I'll dump that stuff every hundred hours, man, get it out of there. As hard as this thing runs, because I mean when it's wide open chipping, it's running at 3000 RPM, so I mean it's got a little over 200 hours on it, so the 200 hours it's ran at 3,000 RPMs. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep fresh oil in it. This is half inch hose, fixing to put it on a 3 8 
nipple, which is not going to work, but So that little vacuum trick will work on any kind of tank too, by the way. We used to do it a lot like on hydraulic tanks and uh, there you go, she's a running. Hydraulic tanks, fuel tanks, uh, anything like that. Oh yeah, yeah she's running. If you can see that right there or not. Yep, so that's gonna work. I mean, it'll work on a water tank, anything. I mean, uh, a shop vac works really well because it, it pulls a heck of a vacuum on it and allows you to do whatever you're gonna do and not make a huge mess or spill anything anywhere. So let that drain and then We'll shut the old valve on it and filter it with oil. Pull that filter off. Well, I was hoping it wouldn't do that, but uh, there's obviously a lot of oil up top up there. Running down. Got the new filter on. Got the valve closed and we'll pull this hose off. Like I said, I'll get me a 3 8 in the hose clamp to go on it for the next time it needs to be changed. I'm going to smoke her off. It's got the uh, fuel filter swapped on there. It's not bad to do. Just undo that bolt right there for that clamp that's holding it. Pop those two clips out on each end. And it'll come right out. We'll pressure it up. You hear that fuel pump? We'll do it again and we'll crank it this time. This fuel pump right there. So she's ready to go. Other than I need to get this bolt out. I'm gonna do that tomorrow though. I get it out. Should come out pretty easy. I hope in here. Couldn't stand it. Went ahead and pulled it out. I drilled it and stuck a uh, ease out in it and backed it out. It didn't really want to, but uh it came on out. So uh what I need to do now is is uh, just grease it, fill it back up with gas, because I'm done about a half a tank in it, and she'll be ready to go. So my thoughts on the last chance cables, 
bandit does that for you know kind of a cover their tail kind of deal kind of thing for a safety aspect but man if you're if you're riding that brush you're hung in it there's really no way that you're hardly going to be able to grip that thing that cable like that and hold it in your hand and snatch it to do the reverse on it because i mean i was pulling on it you know as hard as i could to pull the reverser lever back i mean you got to push on the reverser bar pretty good to make it go back now the vermeers they've actually got a bar at the bottom of the feed table down there and it's pretty handy because if you bump it with your legs or anything like that it'll it'll disable the feed wheels but the problem with it is a lot of times when you're feeding the stuff and i run into this too but not as bad as on the vermeers the you'll like say limbs are sticking down or something uh, you'll run something in there and it'll hit that bottom feed bar that safety bar and it, it disables the machine and i have that happen from time to time on my bar that goes over the top of it sometimes i'll have limbs or have a fork or something as it's pulling in there it'll catch that bar trip it and, and reverse it and i have to go back and kick it back into forward to to, to make it go but those uh those cables in my opinion are just there for looks if you are in that far in on the machine caught in the brush you're you're toast anyhow and i mean if you're right there you can still reach the the reverser bar i'm sitting here looking at it you can still get to get to it and so that's the thing man if you're if you're fooling with a chipper or you're new around a chipper or anything try to get that reverser bar and in if if you got people working for you say you've got a chipper you're a tree company man make sure you go over uh, with the guys that are going to be around that chipper the do's and the don'ts on it because most of the stories that i read where people go through the chippers and they go through them all the time i mean it's like almost monthly or every couple months i get an article that somebody's been through a chipper the best thing you can do if you're an owner or you're you work for somebody and you got a new hire on there be sure and walk them around that machine and explain to them what is and what ain't and if they've got experience if they've been around a chipper so they've been around of a mirror or something and now they're around a bandit or they're around a, a bandit and and now they're around a vermeer or more bark or whatever flavor chipper it is and the older ones don't have a lot of safety stuff on them take the time even if they've ran one for a while kind of go over things with them because the vermeer controls they're they're different than the bandit stuff and vice versa and it would be worth the five minutes because that's probably about all it would take to go around it is about five minutes to show all the stuff on it and maybe that could keep somebody from getting hurt or anything because it's like i said in other videos the feed wheels when they're pulling there's no stopping those feed wheels. It, it's not happening. Those feed wheels, because they, they've got some torque, because a lot often I'll get my grapple hung in a limb or something as I feed it into the chipper, and it hangs that grapple, and it starts pulling it. And, I mean, ain't nothing I can do. I mean, it'll actually pull that mini excavator. It'll pull the boom and the grapple toward it. Now, the grapple's not going to go through it because it's too large, but the force of it, even if you try to override it and push the swing joystick back the other way, you, you're not going to override it. And I know there's guys, there's guys that feed these things with the stand-on mini skids, and, and I know they've got their grapples hung and stuff before, and I know they know what I'm talking about, and people can relate to it because those things have got some insane pull because i mean that machine is designed to eat wood and that's what it does it it eats dang wood so uh, you can use this video as a safety video and uh show it whatever you need to do and uh you know if i'll go this far too if if somebody wants a video like a safety type video on a chipper me and Chris will do one one day. We'll do, we'll sit down and we'll do just a video and we'll actually put the chipper in operation 
and we'll show how to run it and the do's and the don'ts of what to do and what not to do. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.